what a grounding call, but there's Robertson on the right of your screen and his partner, the former Cougars coach Jim Walden, and on coach. the left of your screen. Those guys, just such classy individuals, so much fun to be around. And as a matter of fact, you know, it would be kind of nice, just the voices of the game. Let's Bob Robertson and Jim Walden on the Cougars radio network. Let's listen in. That eligible receiver was right. out there, so... Now he has two men to the right. That's an incomplete pass. Ball still on the 32-yard line. Snap. Back goes Brink. In the pocket. Going to run up in the middle now. At the 35. Goes into a slide for a short gain. As he got the ball to maybe just across the 35-yard line. Bray was standing in his path that time. And he went down on the slide. Took the short gain at the 35. Well, the one thing we're probably doing a little bit for my, as far as I'm concerned, we're running a few too many takeoffs. I know we're behind by 19, and I know that time is running out, but you got to maintain drives. So don't give up the short stuff because they're laying back a little bit more. They're not going to give us the big play takeoff. So take what they give you, run some underneath stuff. Two men go wide to the right side. Nobody out to the left. Tight end on the left. Timeout taken by Washington State. Brink will take the timeout. 11:29 left in the game. 31-12 Oregon State leading. Timeout on the Cougars Sports Radio Network. That was... Bob Robertson. I don't. People just don't understand from a technical standpoint sometimes how good he is. What a great. Uh, what great description. Well, he's, you know, I remember him watching with Jack Thompson. He'd go sidelines to the left, running room to the right, three right receivers to the right, Brian Kelly, Mike Levinsell split to the right side. He'd give you the whole thing in a short period of time. He's unbelievable. You literally can see it on the radio. Now, Washington State, one out. Such an entertaining announcer on the Cougars radio network, Bob Robb with Jim Walden, as they try to breathe a little life into this late stage situation. Where's he going with it? Out of the 43? That's a long way from the 42. Yeah, that'd be about right, wouldn't it? 15 yards to the 43-yard yeah. line. So anyway, the Cougars now have the ball at the 43 of Oregon State. Well, all that said, it was a great return. I mean, it, you really, you know, you, we forget that part. We're so worried about the call, but it was a really, Tyler Brickery just did a great job, individual job of getting the ball upfield. Yeah, he spun away from one yeah. sure tackle and then cut back into the middle again. All right, Cougars on the on the way. Here's the quarterback, the snap, the handoff, and Harrison tries the right side, got nothing. Down he goes on the 47, maybe got a yard to the 46-yard line. Jerome Harrison once again on the carry, or check that from the 43 down to the 42-yard line. One yard for Harrison. Well, that's a case there where Harrison actually missed his hole. Calvin Armstrong in the left-hand side over here had a huge hole on the draw. He just did not get back to it. Jason Hill, wide side to the left, two receivers right. Back goes the quarterback again, throws for Hill down the left side on the run. Bobbled it at the 10-yard line, couldn't hold it. He was under pretty good pressure that time from Eric Williams on the corner, but Jason Hill had a chance for his first catch of the day and let it elude him at the 10-yard line. And you're never going to throw a ball any better, and you're never going to get many balls land in your lap any better than that to have him drop it. It was almost so easy, he lost his concentration. There's a flag out on the field that called it down. No, they wouldn't have, his defensive hole, but that's a touchdown pass, he just dropped it. I don't know if it was so easy or what, but he just took his eyes off of it. But that was a beautiful throw by Alex Brink right down the bucket, and he just dropped it. But the Cougars do get a first down at the 32-yard line with 4.07 to go in the football game. Will Hauser over the ball at center. Signal is called by Alex Brink, the quarterback. The freshman back, goes back, throws to the left side, trying to get the ball to Prater. He's got it at the five. Touchdown, Washington State. Greg Prater into the end zone as he caught that ball going down the left side. And Washington State has scored here, still battling. The Cougars trying to get back as close as they can into this ball game. And Alex Brink throws to Greg Prater. That one good for 32 yards and a touchdown. And coming with 4.01 left to play in the football game. And now Lauren Langley is on to try the extra point. Last man on as a blocker. Here comes Jesse Taylor. No, last man on going to be Brendan Oswega-Stark. They'll spot the ball with Bosler holding at the 10-yard line. 
and Riley Fitzchapel's snap. Here's the kick on its way, and it is good. He made it. 4:01 to go in the ball game. 38 to 19 is the score now in favor of Oregon State, and we take timeout on the Cougar Sports Radio Network. Well, and we'll pick it up here on FSN, and I would rather be lucky than good any day. You got a chance to listen to some of Bob Robertson signature work on the Cougars radio network Greg Prater by the way with his first career touchdown yeah that was great and uh, you know Bob we just want to say congratulations to both him and his wife Joanne their 53rd uh, wedding anniversary they celebrated yesterday that's and Joanne course, in the back of the booth that's Joanne right there and that's Jim Walden's daughter Emily there so congratulations to Bob and Joanne on on just a wonderful people they are they really are You know, come to think of it, Bob Robertson so strongly associated with the Cougars, but he did Washington games for a while. And so I guess what it comes down to is that there was a time during which obviously he called your games and he called Sonny Six Killers games when Sonny was playing for the Huskies. So he had a piece of, uh, a piece of both of our analysts here on FSN. And again, I for somebody who is a student of the craft, Bob Robertson describes the action as well as anybody as I have ever listened to. 